and uh, we would watch him. He would sing. He would sing very passionately. Uh, and so I would have him sometimes come up to the platform and get that microphone and sing with me this old song, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. And he sent me the video because that mor this morning when he walked in to that old church, they were singing in Russian this old song. And, of course, for us, for he and I, memories go way back now, like probably 40 years. But uh, I just, it reminded me that, and I'm glad you all are here today, but I'm here for Jesus. And I pray that's why you're here today. I pray that you're here seeking more of Jesus. Um, and in a few minutes today, I've asked uh, Brother uh, Mark and Sister Irma, they're going to talk to us today. They're going to preach, teach, whatever inspired they feel. And God's going to use them to minister to us today. And I'm so glad. I know we haven't taken a lot of time to say, this. James, I'm so glad you're back. Amen. Amen. And Sylvain and Axio, we are so glad you came all the way from Rwanda to be with us. Well, that's our added blessing. We're glad you're here. And Ida, we're so glad you're here, Ida. God bless you. Margarita, you too. We're so glad you're here. And uh, today we have Sase with us. Sase, thank you for coming today. And I can do that because I'm the pastor. I know. Not, not everybody else can do that. Right, Brother Orson? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, if you would, they're going to put the words on the screen to this old song. And we're going to start with this. We're going to start with it like as a praise, as a prayer. We're not just here to sing because of the melody, but because we want to lift praise to the Lord, okay? And by the way, look who's at the piano. Woohoo! It's Jonathan. And he is, uh, he and Nadi and Naomi and the new baby, right? <laughs> they moved back here. It's going to take about a month for Jonathan to get resituated here. But I am so thankful. They are going to help us in so many ways. Just like you are. You may not know it. But God is positioning us for a great harvest of souls. People to come to Jesus. Don't ever forget that. It's not just about some joining some church. It's about coming to know Jesus and to walk with Jesus. I can't emphasize that enough today. We're here for his sake. We're here to know him. So join with us as my wife, like she's going to probably carry us. But, you know, I can't even keep uh, the beat. But we're going to sing. All right. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. in his blood oh come on sing it now this is my story this is my song praising my savior all the day long this is my story My Savior all the day long, perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now. 
burst on my sight. Angels descending, bring from above echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story. This is my song. Oh, that's it. Sing it. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Okay, one more verse. Let's sing it together. Perfect submission. All is at rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story. Oh, yes, tell it, tell it to Jesus. Praise Him, my Savior, all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior, all the day Hallelujah, hallelujah. <clears throat> now, you know, this has become my favorite part of the time of the service, singing these old songs. And we start this way on Sunday since we came here in uh, January. And it's just been a real, for me, a real blessing to sing the old songs. And uh, don't worry, we'll get cranked up here in a little bit. And the young people going to lead us and we'll do some dancing. Hello, right? We'll do some praising. But it's all right to cry a little bit too. Let the Holy Ghost work in us. And uh, today we are blessed to have so many wonderful people who uh, contribute to Living Hope. Uh, teaching, preaching, ministry, testimonies, just wonderful things. Today we have um, Brother Mark and Sister Irma Flores and my understanding is Sister Irma is going to go first. Is that right? Do you want to introduce her? or Is that good? You, she, you just want to come, Sister Irma? All right. Well, you come right ahead, and they already have your texts and notes, and we're ready to go. Turn and greet your neighbor and say, I'm so glad you're here. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, Sister Irma is a tremendous teacher. She was my, uh, one of my Bible study teachers, so you're going to get a good, a good treat this morning. But beyond the information that is going to be given to the mind, open up your heart and your spirit and let the Lord impart to you faith and whatever the message of the word is. But uh, I do honor my wife here this morning. and. Let me get off before she takes some of my time up. So, God bless each and every one of you. You may be seated. I'm a little nervous, like I told Bishop Staden. 
but I am glad to be in the house of the Lord. How many is glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. Amen. I honor my husband as well. He is a great uh, friend, best friend, and I love him. We have been together for over 10 years. We've known each other 15, and I, I honor him. He supports me in everything I do, and he is a true man of God as well. Amen. I also honor Bishop Staten and Sister Linda. I, I love them very much. <laughs> uh, we may not tell them as often, but we look up to you all very much. And we honor you. I honor you for everything you do. I honor my pastor, Pastor Garza, which is my brother, and Sister Rita as well. We love them dearly. And I just want to let you know that you all have wonderful pastors. Uh, I have been privileged to come up here every Thursday, I said this past Thursday, for prayer. And let me tell you, this man of God loves you. He wants you to make it. He really does. He wants to take you to that promised land. And I hear him crying out for the church fervently, and it just moves me. The first time I came, I heard him praying, and I, and I was praying, and it, so it's like God said, listen to him. And I was listening to him and I thought, man, he's taking the church. If you follow this man, I know he follows Christ, but if you follow and connect with his vision, you're going to do great and mighty things. So I love Bishop Staten. I love that he loves to pray. He prays the word and he knows the word. And I love that about him. And I love this church as well. Like I said, I'm a little nervous because I usually just minister to our little church in Spanish, but I'm going to, I'm going to begin in the beginning of this year in January 1st at midnight, my husband and I walked out. It was just us together and went to go see the fireworks and give our kiss. And we began to pray and we asked God for this year, 2022 to be something so different for us. We ask God that we would seek him, but that we would see the miraculous. Yeah. And I said, God, and I know my husband was leading. I was just binding together with him. We want to see souls come in, but there is more for us this coming year. And as we began this year, I did not, I could not believe that as soon as that happened within that week, I, we got a call at 2 a.m., she is a, like a daughter to me. I was with her throughout her pregnancies. She was married very young at 15 and I helped her. And she called me at two in the morning that her little brother who was 20 years old had died and he had overdosed on drugs. I began to pray, but I was, the sleep was so heavy. I went and dosed back off. I kind of told my husband it was Sister Noelia, her brother, Eric Trevino had died three times. They had resuscitated him. When she called me at 6 AM, she said, I'm here. They allowed me to come into the room. They don't think he's going to make it. Sister, can you pray at this moment? We're here in Maryland. <laughs> They're in Texas. But I said, I told my husband, let's bind together. And we began to pray. My husband began to lead. And intercession and in prayer and we began I felt like it was a battle for his soul mainly my husband kept praying for the mercy and the grace of God to give him one more opportunity and we interceded for almost 40 minutes I believe it was just praying and praying and it lifted and we hung up and we just continued to say God he's only 20 years old I have known that little boy my, that friend of mine, she's like a daughter, has taken care of them. They've had just a rough upbringing. I said, God, have mercy. Well, I'm going to let you know that miracle did happen. That young man is now walking, and it's a true miracle of God. And he has come back to the Lord. And I thank God for the miracle that God did. But more than anything... I said, God, it was not because of our prayers. It's because we were seeking you and you heard us. Last week's message of Bishop Staten, 
really moved me. I was so moved, and the Spirit of the Lord moved, and the gifts were operating that day. And I said, wow, I had already kind of had that thought of seeking God. You had mentioned that, of connecting with him. We need to go after God like never before. We are living in a day that the enemy wants to shut us down. They did it for almost two years. But you're still here. And you can tell the devil, I'm still here. I'm still standing. And I'm still seeking. I'm still going after God. I'm still pursuing him. And I want to share a few scriptures of God going after God or seeking and some of those scriptures were shared last week, but I want us to move forward and connect with him like never before. We need to walk, talk, act, and do everything like Jesus. But it only takes when we seek him with all our heart. Psalms 27, 4, I'm going to read him really quick because there's several. One thing, this is one of my favorite scriptures and that I love one thing I have desired of the Lord that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. I want to seek him and I want to serve him fervently all the days of my life. Jeremiah 29, 12, 13, then shall ye call upon me and ye shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you and ye, and ye shall seek me and find me. And when you search for me with all your heart, I want to seek him and I want to find him. I don't want to go into all the dreams that I've had, but I remember a dream that I was so fervently seeking for him. And in that dream, the enemy wanted to uh, come after me and was chasing me. And he was hiding me because I was trying to find him. And he kept opening doors to hide me and opening doors, doors be within doors, walls within walls. He was hiding me because I was searching for him. And I believe he wants to do that for us each and every day. Yes, we're saved. Yes, I know you have the Holy Ghost, but it's beyond that. We need to seek him. We need to hear him. We need to be directed by the Holy Ghost in this hour. Uh, First Chronicles 16, 11, seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his face continually. That means daily, every moment, every second of the day. We need to be totally dependent on him. Proverbs 8, 17, I love them that love me and those that seek me early shall find me. Are you waking up every morning? Saying, God, thank you for this day. Thank you for lending me this day. Thank you, Father, for your love and your mercy upon me. Psalms 14, 2, the Lord looketh down from heaven. He looks down at us upon the children of men to see if there were, uh, were, there were, were any of them that understand and seek God. He's looking down. Who is seeking for me? Who is searching for me? I want that. I want God to see. I want to please God, not man. I want God to be pleased to say, you know what? There's a sister. There's a brother that is searching for me, that is seeking. Matthew 6, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. We need to seek him first. Provisions will come. God will open. But if we seek him first, everything will be okay. Even if you're hurting a little bit, even if you're in pain, you seek him. You know that he is with you. He walks with you. Matthew 7, 7, ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and he shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. I'm sorry. Isaiah 55, uh, unto you. Isaiah 55, 6, seek. Ye the Lord, I love this, it should be a song. The Lord, while he may be found, call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him. And to God he will, uh, he will abundantly pardon. We seek him and he will be found. I do believe in this day and hour that we're living, we're so distracted. 
There's so many things that take our time away or even our phones or whatever, or just, we're just lethargic. It's like, there's no strength. The enemy wants to take that away, but we need to seek his word. We need to go in prayer. We need to just be and listen to, if you feel like, you know what? I don't want, just listen to the word, press play. Or press the preaching. God will minister to you. We need to continually be seeking him daily. <laughs> Second Chronicles 26, 5. I'm going to skip. I, I didn't do all of them. It says, uh, this is on, on King Uzziah 5. And he sought God in the days of Zechariah who had understanding in the visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him prosper. We need, and there's so many, there's over 300 scriptures about seeking the Lord. And this one scripture kind of stands out was like, as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. That is telling us as long as we seek the Lord, God is going to prosper us in this hour. <laughs> Lord God Almighty, let us seek you like never before. Let us come after you. Let us pursue you daily. In the name of Jesus. We are not to be laid back. We are not to be too comfortable in this hour. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, Hashoko. It's not to be casually. We're not to serve God casually. We need to wholeheartedly come after Him. We need to pursue Him forcibly, aggressively, as much as we can. We need to push ourselves. That's why those miracles throughout the New Testament, they sought after God, after Jesus. They wanted a miracle they pressed through the crowds they went to him and then god gave them the miracle they had faith and they believed but they sought him they cried out to him are we crying out i'm speaking to myself in this it's not just to you it's speak to myself I want to cry out to him daily and seek him in every decision I make and everything I do when I step out, when I go out, when I'm going to meet someone. I want to seek his face. In the name of Jesus. In the story of the nativity scene this past December, my husband was doing a teaching. We have a group. In Peru, we do it. Some kids, they had right, gone up to 90 kids, children that were in that, that Bible study. And he was doing that Bible study. And I was not able to be there, but I was there at home. I had to work at that Bible study. He started at 530. And I was still working. And I heard him. And I'm listening to him teach. And it was something so simple he said. And it's just like the Holy Ghost spoke to me. The story said that the birth was, uh, that Jesus was wrapped. You know, he was telling them that the, in swaddling clothes and they laid him in a manger, but there was no room for them. And then in, in the end, and I know this is something in the natural. We all know this story, but God spoke to me spiritually that they have made God. People have not made room for him and God. And I just began to cry there at my, at my desk. And I said, God, I want to make room for you. I want to seek you more in that area so you can be birthed in me. And I want that in all of our lives. I cried and I wept thinking, wow, something so simple, very simple. We need to make room for him daily. We need to stop being asleep or lethargic. I feel sometimes that way. We get so bogged down with so many other things and busy and distracted. And that's what the enemy wants, that we won't draw close to him. He is our heavenly father, the creator of heaven and earth. He's the one that has uh, it, it breathe, it breathes his breath of life in us. He gives and takes away. Why don't we seek him? Why don't we? His presence is not a game in Jesus name. And I'm going to, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to take too long. I want to give my husband that uh, I want him to minister and I love to hear him. 
But I want to let you know God's presence and God's uh, us seeking him is not a game. We don't come just once a week to gather and just to hear. We have to be doers of the word. We really do, not just hearers of the word. We need to go out there and speak and be that light to this world that is so dark. I feel the Holy Ghost all over me. Psalms 10, 4 says, The wicked through his pride and his countenance will not seek after God. I don't think I give you that scripture, sorry. God is not in all his thoughts. His ways are grievous. The judgments are far out of his sight. As far as his enemies, he puffed them. And he said in his heart, I shall not be moved. The wicked say that. And I said, God, I don't want my heart to be wicked. They don't think about God. And sometimes I wonder, God, do I think about you? I want to have you in my mind daily. Every moment, every second of the day. Even if I'm working, I want to think of your good things and of your goodness, of your love and your mercy each and every day. I want to seek him the first thing when I get up in the morning. I want to search for him like never before. In the name of Jesus. The Psalms 3410 says, the young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not uh, want any good thing. Wow, if you just seek him, you're not going to lack anything in your life. That is just telling us God wants to connect us back. You know, I, we have so many devices we use. I mean, we have cell phones, we have wireless vacuums, we have so many devices we have to connect and plug. We need to connect and plug ourselves each and every day with God. I know that when that battery's running low, I am not going to act like a Christian. And a lot of us can say that. You know when you have not been seeking God and not praying. You don't act Christ-like. But the more you're connected and plugged in, that battery is fully charged. You're going to act and walk and talk like God. They're going to say, there's something different about you. What is that? Oh my God, you're glowing. What is it? And they know it's God that is in you. But God, when you seek him, you will not lack anything. Matthew 6, says, we already read that, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. When you seek him, everything, even when you don't have the money to pay something, or when you're so sick, you seek him, God is going to bless you. God is going to heal you. Go after God. Pursue him. God is saying, I miss you. I remember going, and I told my husband, I remember going, and I... I walked into, uh, it was in the, in church. We had the keys to go into the church to go pray. And I walked in and he told me, I've been waiting for you. I began to cry. I just said, God, you want to talk to us. Have you ever wanted to talk to somebody and you call them and they don't answer? And you're like, I need to talk to somebody. And it was like, he wanted to talk with me. And I began to cry. And say, God, I want to spend more time with you. I want to seek you. I want to go after you. I want to start like from like when I began with my first love. How many of you remember when you first got saved? Man, you were just like on a cloud. You ate and breathed. And you talked about Jesus to anybody and everybody. And they looked at you kind of weird, but you didn't care. You just talked about him. And that's where I want to be. Where I, when I first began, I want to reconnect with him. We want that double portion in our lives, don't we? We want it just like Elisha had it. But sometimes we don't want to give up. He wanted it. Spiritually, he gave up everything. If you read that scripture, he left the plow and he left everything. And he followed that man of God. And now... We, we want to be blessed. I want to be blessed. I want to have a new house. I want to have a new car. But you're not seeking him. I want to have a double portion. But God wants to bless you. In the name of Jesus, if you seek him, you need to seek him in this hour. And I'm going to finish with this. The, I already kind of got over. Have I gone over? He was going to time me. The decade of 
we in the Hebrew year, and I don't want to say a lot of different things, but this Hebrew or decade that we're in, it's 5782. 80 in the Hebrew means pay, which means mouth, speak, or sound. It represents the voice of God. During this decade, and we have seen just in the beginning of 2020, which is their 5780, the beginning of the eight and them, and I'm not going to go into that, all that detail, because it takes too long. But God, I mean, the enemy has tried to shut us, our mouths down. And we know that, and I'm not going to go into it. We see it with our mask, with the shutdowns of the church. But this is the hour of the church to rise up and say, I'm going to lift my voice. I'm going to declare. I'm going to prophesy. I'm going to seek him more like never before. In the name of Jesus, God bless each and every one of you. In Jesus' name. Well, I told you, the Lord is in this place. Proverbs 2, 6. I know I didn't give you that scripture, but Proverbs 2, 6. This is what the Lord is doing to us this morning by the burden of his spirit over us here. Proverbs 2, 6. For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Before I continue, I want to give honor to Bishop Staten and his family. Thank you for allowing us to be here. I honor my pastor, man of God in my life. I give him honor and for his covering over me. And... Uh, we're certainly happy to be here with you and blessed. But this scripture here is what is actually every time the word of God is being preached. I want to thank my wife as well. What a powerful teaching. Yes. Spirit of faith and impartation. For the Lord giveth wisdom out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Three things. The way I have understood impartation there are three different things that take place in impartation you get knowledge which is a revelation of the word of god but how what good is it for us to not know what to do with the revelations that we receive so we must understand and wisdom is the application of revelation and understanding when a full impartation has taken place in the body of christ there's a word of revelation that goes out then there comes understanding by the Spirit of God. And then there comes wisdom, which is uh, how to apply what has been given to you. Brother, Brother Abitangelo, I, I was not talking about this with you. And I don't know why, what I'm doing on this Bible verse. But <laughs> we're talking about being led of the Lord. Quick example on the spirit of impartation or the cycle of impartation. Thou art Peter. First of all. He said, who do men say that I am? And Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Revelation. Peter, my father in heaven hath revealed it to you. Why? And unto you I give the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and loose on earth. Loose in heaven. Well, he was given the revelation of the Messiah because the keys were going to be given to him. Revelation and understanding. The first two of Proverbs 2.6. Out of the mouth of the Lord cometh knowledge. Uh, the, the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. On the day of Pentecost, after the shaking of Peter, after Satan had tried to shake him up and buffet him, he held, he held on to that revelation. And he held on to that understanding that the keys of the kingdom were given unto him. But he could not apply that revelation and that understanding until the day of Pentecost. When the Holy Ghost came and the, everything that had happened had taken place, he stood up and say, he said, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. 
revelation, understanding, and wisdom was a complete fulfillment and impartation of that word of God. I'm not teaching about that this morning, but I want to give that to you because it'll help you understand where you are with God. We receive revelation. We receive understanding. But when and how to apply it is by the spirit of God and the timing of God only. And the things that you've heard here this morning, that spirit and that burden of prayer that's in my wife, that, that, that seeking after him, it could be as a spirit of revelation and understanding that God is calling his people. But if you seek after him, he said, seek my face. The psalmist says, your face, O oh God, will I seek. Hallelujah. I can tell you that a mighty army will rise up among you. Giants on the earth that walk with the Lord and hear from the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to talk to you this morning very briefly. The subject or the theme of this year is connecting. One of the themes is connecting to our creator. Amen. Amen. Connecting with our God, the relationship. I want to talk a little bit about the hindrances that can take place and have taken place in our lives. And I am the master of, uh, of being a victim of this because it takes one to know one. <laughs> From believers to sons of God. Some of the stuff I'm going to share with you today, some of you already believe and walk in this. But there are those of you that want more. As my wife said, there's more for us. There's a call of God. There's an anointing in every one of our lives here today. You ever find yourself daydreaming, laying hands on the sick, on the dead? That is God. That's not you. The flesh is enmity against God. It cannot understand the things of God. Cannot be in unison with the things of God. So your dreams and your visions and your daydreaming of preaching and winning the loss is a desire God has placed in you for the call of God. Hallelujah. Your carnal mind will never draw those things up. But the spirit of the Lord that is in you. I'm going to say amen. amen. From believers to sons of God. 1 John 3, 1 and 2 says, Behold what manner... Of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. It is important for the children of God to know their identity. In our culture, of our apostolic culture, in our Pentecostal experience, we have a zeal to know the one true living God. And his name is Jesus, for God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Christ, the image of God. We love all this oneness. We love the identity, the mystery of the Godhead. We love all that. But there's one thing that we lack, and I presented to you this morning. Perhaps our identity needs to be cemented in our spirit by grace through God. We know him. We know he can speak a word like this. And silence the adversary and cause a harvest to come forth and send his laborers forth. But God doesn't do that. Why? Because God wants you to believe his word. He wants you to transition yourself from a caterpillar to a butterfly. And if he speaks a word and gives it to you, you'll never develop yourself. So God has us, it calls us to do warfare against the adversary. He causes us to, to, to go through trials and tribulations in, in life so that we can develop our faith in him and discover the power of the one true God that spoke the heavens and the earth into existence. There's a reason why we are in a war. There's a reason why the enemy has not been completely subdued yet. It is because God is preparing his people. And the people of God must know their identity in God. We must be free from the snare of the adversary. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Our identity 
is not to be as believers. We can use this, these terms to describe ourselves, but the greatest dimension of faith in a person that has been baptized in the name of Jesus, repented of his sins, and filled with the Holy Ghost is the dimension of sons of God. The dimensions of a sons of God transcends believers. For when we come to God, we believe and we hear the word. And then we follow him when we are baptized in Jesus' name and his spirit has come upon us. We become followers of the Lord. And then we become servants of the Lord. The disciples were servants, they were followers. And many times we stay in that dimension. We do not progress to sonship with our Lord Jesus Christ, our Heavenly Father. The greatest dimension in my opinion and my experience as I have lived in this is to become conscious of your sonship in the Father. We come as believers and followers and servants of the kingdom and that's great. That is powerful. That is beautiful. You have this entire service running today because there are people that are willing to serve in the kingdom of God. But the dimension of sonship transcends all those three things. From my experience, I've seen sonship with God takes away your struggle to pray. Sonship with God removes prayerlessness and doubt. And self-condemnation and self-guilt. When you enter into that place of sonship with God, pastors doesn't have to tell you, you need to go in souls. You need to do this. It's born out of you. It's born. It comes out of you and it makes itself manifest. Hallelujah. There's a Weapon that the adversary uses against us to steal away our identity of sonship. And it is a very important thing that we must understand. Matthew 5, 6. In the beginning of Jesus' ministry, he began to speak of the kingdom of heaven coming upon the earth. And he begins in Matthew 5 to describe the condition that one must find themselves in when they are candidates. When they, if they want to be candidates of the gospel. There's a condition of so has to mean. I think Bishop, staying in the years I've been here, you say, hey, if there's no hunger, move on. There's got to be a hunger. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. We are in the kingdom of God. There is a heavenly father. And the scripture says that we are sons of God. The condition of every soul, which you and I, we had hunger and thirst for this. The righteousness of God. Hallelujah. The righteousness and the kingdom of God. These two things cannot be separated from each other. Righteousness is what we are given as a gift from God. As we are ushered into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Why is this important, Brother Mark? Well, we'll get to that in just a minute. Righteousness and the kingdom cannot be separated. Romans 14, 17, Jesus talked about blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. He's introducing the kingdom of God to the earth, to humanity, to those that would hear with ears of faith and believe. And then in Romans 14 says, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost, which we have. Amen. Righteousness is essential. When we do spiritual warfare, what is one of the... The, 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 the apparel that we put on by faith, the breastplate of righteousness. Righteousness is important in the eyes of God. And it was a principle from the very beginning of the kingdom of God being preached upon the earth. We must walk and receive and put on righteousness by faith through Christ that was given to us as a gift. If we try to attain holiness before righteousness, we become religious. Because holiness without righteousness is you're continually going, you're pretty much going back to the law. But the righteousness of God is a gift that is given to you. And holiness is your goal. You participate in holiness. You can say, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. I am righteous. I've been cleansed by the blood. I will seek after the Lord. And you work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Holiness. But righteousness 
If you're not careful, the adversary will have you confusing righteousness with holiness. Gaining your righteousness by what you do in being holy. And that is a false identity of a son of God on the earth. And no wonder we struggle to believe the word of God and our faith sometimes is attacked. And let me tell you something more and more in the end time that we're living in. If we are not cautious, if we're not careful, the enemy is going to come hard at the believers, at those children of God on the earth. To try to get them out and derail them out of their call from God's will. Out of the purpose by which they were born. We must know our identity in our culture of apostolic Pentecost. We love the oneness. I've said it before. We love to talk about the, uh, the deity of God. But what about our identity in God? That one that draws you out into the field of labor. Hallelujah before the Lord. Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and. And all these things shall be added unto you. We're born into a kingdom. And at the end of, uh, at the end of his government or his kingdom. I don't know. Nine, Isaiah 9, 6. You don't have to go there. There shall be no end. His kingdom is without limitation. The blessings, the provisions of God are without limitation. But what happens when those that are called by his name and are sealed with the spirit unto redemption, do not understand or know or are even walking in the understanding of what is due unto the church as a blessing and the promises of God for us. Hallelujah. I don't know if this silence means I'm doing good or not, but praise God. Righteousness is essential. Righteousness in you is important because it will cement you in connecting with your God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are righteous because he is in us. The Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. What hinders our relationship with God? What hinders our prayer? What is it that keeps us from hearing the voice of God? It is this feeling of accusation from the pits of hell. The constant accusation. The constant comparison. The uncertainty in those that have fallen snare to the adversaries. Tactics, strategy, whatever he uses to get you down. You're unworthy. You are not qualified to be used of God. You're, God is mad at you. I know this sounds kindergarten. It's like, Brother Mark, what are you doing? Did you, do you see how they're programming our children in school right now? And what they hear, they believe, and they will become that generation. What do you think the enemy is trying to do to people that are striving to reach God? And program to and speak to our subconscious mind. And try to convince us otherwise than from the word of God that we've already received. I'm telling you, we must step into this dimension of sonship with God. We must be robed in his righteousness. So that prayer is no longer an issue but a desire. Prayer is hard. Yes, it is hard. When you don't understand who you are and the place of, that God has for you. But when you know and you begin to understand, it just flows out of you. Like a person that sings. They can just start singing out of the blue and they're always on key. You say, my God, look at that talent. That is the same thing with the righteousness of God in us. The faith of God that is connected to all of this. I'm telling you today. 1 John 3, 1. Behold what manner um, of love. I read this already. I'm going to read verse 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. This righteousness that God has given us is a gift. You don't have to work for it. You don't have to prove yourself to God to work and to attain approval of God. He already loves you. He already, Luke, Luke 3.22, I'll give you an example here. I lived for years thinking that if I wasn't doing something, producing something out of me, that God was not pleased with me. And there is faith by works. There is. But if you're not there, you can't produce works because your faith is not where it needs to be. Your confidence in God is not where it needs to be. Luke 3, 22, and the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, thou art my beloved son. In thee I am well pleased. Jesus had not done one miracle yet. 
He had not done one miracle. He had not preached one single word. And the father had already approved of him. Why do we let the devil push us around? Why do we let the devil, the devil condemn us? Into taking what has been given to us as a gift from our heavenly father. To walk in the righteousness of God. In the confidence of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. 2 Peter 3.18. I love this verse. But grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Grow in the grace and in the knowledge. We ought to continually grow. There is more in this dimension of faith that we live in. There is more hunger. There is a harvest out there. There will be a day where God will have you close down your carpenter shop. And you will never again return to the workforce. You will go straight into the field of the harvest to do the will of the Father in your life. But you must understand who you are before you go. Jesus knew it, but it was not time. At that wedding, woman, what I had to do with ye? My time has not yet come. But he knew who he was. And when you know who you are in God, it's a matter of time, brethren. It's a matter of time when you know who you are with God. Many will go out of this church and start works out there. You will establish an apostolic stronghold. You will establish apostolic strongholds in the DMV area right here. Why? Because you have come to understand beyond your logical mind in here a revelation. My God, I am a son of God. And wherever he goes, I go. And wherever I go, none can resist me. This identity of the sons of God is a robe of righteousness that we're in. This is not the whole thing of being the sons of God. But this is one big aspect. Because I lived in my life for years struggling with this. This feeling not good enough before God. Not feeling good enough before him. Not feeling qualified enough before the eyes of God. For him to talk to me. For him to speak with me. For him to visit with me. But in 2020. During the pandemic. I was upstairs. Praying. No job. Zero income. And I was praying there. And I. There was such a flow of prayer there. And many times I've, I was taught in Texas, you know, pray, pray in the spirit, pray in the spirit. I, I, I can say words to God. I, I found out I, I can say, maybe you pray this way in the natural, but to me, it's just, it takes all the work out of me trying to bring up words. And I just pray in the Holy Ghost. And as I'm praying in the Holy Ghost, the Lord is speaking to my mind. And I was there praying and praying and praying. And I was saying, Father, I, I don't know what's going on. Where, where am I headed? What's going to happen with the job and the finances and everything? And all of a sudden, it's like the God opened up my spirit and my understanding. And he said, all that you're hearing right now is not you. All these thoughts that you think about yourself is not you. It is a voice of the adversary disguised as your conscience. And the Lord says, this is my voice. This is me. And in that second, as a child, when they realize that Santa Claus is not real. You know that moment when you realize Santa Claus is, no, is not real? It's over, right? It's over. You'll never fall for Santa and cookies and milk. Amen. You'll never set cookies and milk out for that guy to come into your chimney again. Some of you don't even have a chimney. You believe in Santa. <laughs> but what happens, brethren, when we transfer that into your walk with God? When the day comes that you are no longer hearing but are discerning the voice of God from the voice of the enemy. And you immediately... Like an eel, you fall out of the grip of the enemy in your mind. And you begin to believe. Why don't you stand to your feet as I close? This is how we receive this. And I, I didn't have time to go into the rest of the teaching. But some things had to be said this morning. When we baptize somebody, you know, by the confession of your faith. Right? Right? 
and we say we baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ by the confession of your faith. By the confession of your faith. Every day, Paul said, I die daily. Every day as you rise up and you die to yourself in prayer, you must confess this. Father, I receive your righteousness. I receive your love. Even if you don't feel it in your heart. If you're battling with condemnation like never before. There must be a confession of faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. You must hear yourself with your own words, your own mouth confessing. I receive your righteousness this day by faith, Father. I don't feel that way. I don't feel. And suddenly, as you hear yourself, this is not psychology. This is the word of God that was from the beginning. That created the heavens and the earth that is in you. But your mind and your spirit man may be struggling to receive and to walk in the confidence of God. You wake up in the morning at every moment of the day. You have to do it a hundred times a day. Say, Father, I receive your righteousness. I receive your grace. I receive your love. And you ignore the thoughts. And I'm telling you, before you know it, the Lord may test you the first five or ten times you do that. But there will come a time where the Lord will begin to say, Satan, he's mine. You can't touch them no more. They're walking. They're talking the word. They're speaking my words in their heart. And their heart is starting to believe. Hallelujah. Why don't you raise your hands where you are right now. And let the Lord flow through us right now. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, I pray that the spirit of revelation and understanding by impartation, Father, would dwell upon these people, your people, my brethren, Father. The kingdom of God, Father, is at hand in this world. And there is a harvest that is coming. And there is a manifold wisdom of God that is going to be extended over unto this specific body. Father, let the righteousness of God be ushered in and received in this place this morning. For they do hunger and thirst after righteousness father i pray a covering lord i pray a spirit of understanding upon us this morning father let us walk in this confidence with god let us walk in this confidence of the blood of our identity in you father in the name of jesus for our time may not be yet but one day lord we will be called to step out father and when we are called we will go in your name lord in the identity as sons of god hallelujah Hallelujah. Why don't you give God a hand clap right now? Give him some worship right now there where you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wonderful. Um, I know we have a number of guests, and uh, we're glad you're here today. Thank you for joining us as we come to worship Jesus. And um, just a couple things. That was marvelous teaching. And I want to say this because... In, I'm going to say, I don't know about other backgrounds, religious backgrounds, but there are people that come and voices will tell you, for example, Sister Irma did the first 20 minutes. And there are those who believe that women just ought to, hello, be quiet. Hello? Now, you all with me? Don't get mad at me. I'm telling you. All right. And they take some scriptures. It, I'm not ignorant of the scriptures, but the difference is this. When you try to take the spiritual realm and bring it into the fleshly realm, you take the laws of the flesh and try to apply them in the spirit. And the truth is, in the kingdom of God, which is a spiritual kingdom, there is neither male nor female. In the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of God, that's why in the Old Testament... You will find Deborah, when there was not a man to be the prophet, God raised up a prophetess by the name of Deborah. And I'm just saying, look, we've got to enter into the spiritual dimension. I, I'm not telling you, I, look, I'm not big at this. I'm not good at this. But I'm telling you, God is talking to us about spiritual things. You can't receive what was just spoken to you unless you enter into the spiritual dimension. Well, I probably made it more confusing. That's not my intention. I'm trying to let you know that what we was just... In the book of Romans chapter 8, it says this. That as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. What deter, And the, the term son of God... 
is not talking necessarily, certainly it does apply to relationship, but that's not the application of it. The Son of God is one who has power with God. That's, that's why the name of Jacob was changed to Israel, which actually can simplified be defined as Son of God. In reality, it is defining one who has power with God. And the transition of new birth is a spiritual thing that transitions you from a fleshly world into a spiritual dimension. And the spirit of God in you becomes stronger than you trying to live this thing in your flesh. I don't know. Something's happening here today. Look. I'm telling you, we have people, it's your first time here. I don't, I don't necessarily even know who you all are, but I'm glad you're here. And I don't believe God, God doesn't, there's no coincidences. God knows that there are people who are frustrated because you've tried to live for God in your flesh. Hello? And it looks impossible, so you accept less. You accept, well, I guess God never really intended that power for me. Well, I want you to affirm for you today. He does intend that power for you, but it's a spiritual power. It's not a fleshly power. It's just like what Brother Mark just talked to us about righteousness. You, you, it's not your righteousness. It's his righteousness. It's not by your goodness. It's his goodness. There is, Jesus told us that. There is none good. No, not one. There's only one good, and that's God. And when the spirit of goodness, the spirit of God comes within us, he enables us to fulfill the will of God in living out our lives. Well, hey, that's too deep for me. I'm like, hell, Holy Ghost, talk to us. It's like, see, if you're here today and you have been taught that women cannot speak in church, then, then you just got blocked. You, the enemy just, he just stopped you from receiving. You're sitting there the whole time thinking that woman shouldn't be speaking in here. And the whole time, hello, God is trying to open up our understanding that even though things are bad in this world, there's a God who's still in charge. He's still got everything under control. Now, I'm going to tell you for us, because we are entering, hello, hello. I see little smiles on people's faces like, there goes pastor. I'm just telling you, we're not, I'm not going to, I have the word of God. I stand upon his word. The illustration where Paul told the women they ought to keep silence in church was when they were coming into a Jewish synagogue. And the women were sitting on one side and the men on the other side. And the women were yelling across the room to their husbands. What does he mean? And Paul said, y'all need to shut up until you get home. All right. Not, all right, that was crude. That was rude on my part. But I'm trying to get you to understand. It's not that God doesn't want you to communicate. He wants everything to be done decently and in order. We, every one of us have power with God. There's not a one in, in the spirit of God, in, in the kingdom of God, there is neither male nor female, nor Jew, nor Greek, nor bond, nor free, nor black, nor white, nor yellow, nor red. In the kingdom of God, it's a spiritual dimension and we are commanded to love one another. Man, would you raise your hands right now? Why don't you just let that spirit? You may not even agree with everything this preacher's saying, but would you lift your hands and love the God who created you and let him confirm in your heart? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. <sighs> Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. If we're not careful, we have done this. Look, I've been pastor now almost 50 years. I don't even look that old. But it just happens. But I'm going to tell you something. If we're not careful, we measure one another's spirituality by the clothes you have on today. Don't get me wrong. 
I think we ought to dress right. We ought to have clothes on. All right? I think that. All right? But I'm going to tell you something. That's not the measure of your spirituality. Because I've met some folks who had clothes on who had devils in their spirit. Hello? I just say, look, if somehow we can get beyond this carnal, this fleshly thing, and get into the realm of the spirit, we cannot comprehend, because eye hath not seen, ear hath not heard, neither hath entered into the heart of man the things that God hath prepared for them that love him. There are no, not only prophets here, there are prophetesses. Whew. Well, Big word. You got that though? God wants to raise up men and women. Young and old. There's not even age in the kingdom of God. So I know we're supposed to be worshiping right now. So we're going to. See, that's even like there. What worship? Worship is not. We're going to have people come and sing. But this, this is not a comparison of talents. We're not running the, what they call the uh, um, uh, America Idol. Hello? I, I'm telling you, look, this is one of my things today. I see churches across America that are just running talent shows. Everything's measured about who's got the best music. But I'm telling you, Jesus, if you begin to worship him, he is not measuring your worship by the, 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 the talent of your voice. But if we will, and what happens, worship is, is entrance, come into his gates with thanksgiving, right? Into his courts. Is that, is that Lexi? Hi, Lexi. Good to see you. Sorry, folks. Um, just, uh, that's it. We're glad you're here. When you worship, it's like opening a door. When you lift up the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus is the door to access into everything in the kingdom of God. It's not just the way, yes, we baptize in the name of Jesus, but Paul said, whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of Jesus. I'm going to lift my hand in Jesus' name. I'm going to clap my hands in Jesus' name. I'm going to lift my voice in the name of Jesus and enter into his presence. All those things we think are impossible through the realm of the spirit, God is able to perform. God bless you. We're going to worship. And um, then Brother Dan is going to bring us the word today. That's it. Clap your hands. Please make sure our guests know we're glad they're here.